to continue to thinking uh, about trust and uh, how we can and should trust in God and the difference it makes to our lives, uh, the peace that we have, the contentment that we have in our lives when we learn to trust God. We're thinking about why can we trust God? Because he's God, uh, because he's the creator. We trust God because he's eternal. Uh, we trust God because he's all-powerful. We trust God because uh, of the things that God can't do, like he can't lie. God cannot act, act outside of his love. Uh, we trust God because, we were thinking last Sunday, uh, because he is holy. And we're doing just the last part of that this Sunday. Uh, holy means exalted or worthy of complete devotion as one perfect in goodness and righteousness. God's exalted far above all. Uh, and holy isn't just about him being exalted, it's that he's worthy, that he's worthy of our trust because he's the ultimate authority on every subject under heaven. God is holy, worthy of complete devotion, as one perfect in goodness and righteousness. Perfect in his knowledge, perfect in his wisdom, perfect in his understanding even of our weaknesses. We can trust him because he's holy, he's perfect in goodness and righteousness. God is a holy God, uh, he's perfectly good, perfectly right in every way. There's nothing bad in God, God is good by his nature. And God is good, therefore everything that flows from God is goodness. And we can trust God because he always gives us everything that is good for us. And that brings us this morning, I want to think of how God is perfectly righteous. We can trust God because he's perfectly righteous. God is perfectly right in who he is and all of the, that he says and does. Righteousness is essential to his very being and characterizes all that God does. God is morally and ethically right and he acts only in keeping with what is right and just. That theme is common in scripture. It says the judge of all the earth will do right in Genesis 18. It says that he is a righteous judge in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 8. Righteous in the Bible, uh, there's three different words that they use and uh, have different meanings. One is just, innocent, uh, and the right, devout, and upright. He is also honest, justice, and righteousness, and also accuracy, and what is correct, the right thing, what is honest, what is right. And the Bible declares that God is perfectly righteous. He is perfectly just. He is innocent, upright, accurate, correct in everything that he does. He's righteous not sometimes, not even most of the time, but all of the time. And we can trust God because God is always right all of the time. We may think that we're right all the time. Some of us maybe think that more than others. But we're not. We get it wrong. We make mistakes. We're misunderstood. But not God. God is perfectly right. Everything that he says of himself is perfectly right. His written word is perfectly right. We can trust in what God says in the Bible because its author is God. And he is perfectly right in everything that he says. In the world of fake news, uh, there's one place that we can find truth. And that's in God's Word. And of course, uh, many people have interpreted uh, God's Word wrongly at times. And there's times people have used God's Word for, for all wrong reasons to uh, accuse people, to uh, use and abuse others. Uh, people have used it for, for uh, wars and for falling out and for rows and all these other things. And we can make and have made maybe mistakes in our interpretation of God's word and how we understand it. But his word is right. His word is right and true. God is righteous. God is just in all that he does. God is upright in his ways. God operates with honesty. 
God always does the right thing that's appropriate for that moment. And all of those characteristics are, are the characteristics for trusting someone. We can trust someone who's just. We can trust someone who's upright. We can trust someone who's honest. We can trust in someone who always does the right thing. And if any of us are fortunate enough to have a friend like that, it's a friend in whom you can put your trust. God's righteousness means that God always acts in accordance with what is right and is himself the final standard of what is right. God is never wrong. And God sets the very standard for rightness. Deuteronomy 32 and 4 says, He is the rock. His deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He's a faithful God who does no wrong. How just and upright is he? God is a righteous God. He's the source of rightness. He's the beginning and the end of rightness. Our desire, our longing for rightness comes from the fact that we're made in the image of God. That longing and desire that's in our human hearts for rightness and justice comes from God. And God's righteousness means that God will put right every wrong. Every wrong will be punished by God's righteousness. If we're reading in our psalm. We have hope because God is righteous. And no matter how messed up our world becomes, we know that in the end, righteousness will prevail. Justice will come. Every wrong will definitely be paid for. And that inner longing in us for justice can sometimes cause us to lose hope, to despair, when what is good is being unpunished. And what is wrong... Are, are, what is good is being punished and what is wrong often goes unpunished. Where we see the oppressed continue to be crushed and the oppressors often are exalted. We cry, where is God? Where is righteousness? And yet God says, don't despair. Don't lose hope for I am a holy God, a righteous God. An absolute perfect justice will Come, and with it the undiluted wrath of God against all that is evil. God is a righteous God, and we can trust Him because He will do right, and His rightness will prevail. There are many who say God is not just or not fair in the way that He deals with people, and they don't uh, see God as a righteous God. And that sometimes that happens because we measure God's right, this righteousness uh, in how swiftly justice is done. And we often try to judge that by the timing and when it happens. And in our minds, God is righteous when there's a need for justice and it's meted out instantly and we say, oh, justice was done. And when that doesn't happen, we think of God, that God is not being just. And what we often miss in looking for his righteousness is that he's also patient and God is merciful. In fact, one of his greatest displays of righteousness is seen in his patience. Uh, consider that passage 2 Peter 3 and 9, it says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And because God understands his position as a righteous judge and what his ultimate judgment will do, he's not always quick to bring judgment because he'd rather offer mercy first. And because God does not judge a person when we think he should, we can miss the fact that he's a righteous God. 
But ultimately, because he is righteous, no one escapes. No one escapes his righteousness and his justice. It just may not happen in the time frame that we think that it should. And though his righteousness requires that he bring judgment, his righteousness also seeks to allow room for repentance so that he can bring mercy and redemption. Remember, God will always do the right thing in every situation. And no matter how corrupt our world may seem, righteousness will prevail. Let's not be quick to condemn God's timing and dealing with other people. Because were it not for his patience, you and I wouldn't be here this morning. If God only acted in his righteousness and his justice, then you and I would never have had an opportunity to repent and to be saved. Were it uh, not for his patience uh, with me, I wouldn't be here today. In fact, none of us would. Our sin deserved his wrath. And so for all of mankind. But God chooses to give us grace and mercy and time for repentance. And we see that when we look through his dealing with his people in, in the Old Testament. And the people turned their backs on God and, and, and God gave them time. God gave them opportunities and warnings and time to repent. But eventually, righteousness would come and judgment would come. And though he delay, though he wait, he offers grace and mercy Time for repentance. The time will come when that, the right time, when patience will end and wrath will come and every wrong will be righted. Every wrong from the beginning of time will be put right. One day God will set everything straight. God will one day stand as a judge of everyone. And there'll be a moment when we will all must appear before his right, uh, this righteous judge uh, where God will settle all of the accounts. Justice will come. Righteousness will prevail. If you're in Christ, the good news is that your account has already been settled because Jesus has made atonement for you on the cross. If you're not in Christ, then you'll be judged according to God's standard of righteousness, which no one can meet by themselves. And that means we have two choices. We can stand in our own righteousness, which is not a good idea. Or we can stand in Christ's righteousness. And we'll hear those wonderful words that says, well done, good and faithful servant. Rather than depart from me, for I never knew you. God is righteous because he's perfectly right. And his holy righteousness is beautiful. The righteousness of God is a wonderful and a beautiful thing and it makes us possible to trust him. Because we know that if we trust Him with our lives, if we trust Him with our, our, our families, we trust Him with everything that we have and are, that in the end, that it will, God will make it all right. He'll make it all right because He's a righteous God. Because He's a righteous God. And because of that, we can lay our lives into His hands and we 
can trust him. His holy righteousness is a beautiful thing. But in contrast, our self-righteousness is not a beautiful thing. In fact, our self when we're self-righteous, it's an insult to God. Insult to a holy God who gave his son to pay for our sin and to offer to us righteousness that we didn't deserve. And Jesus took upon himself on that cross our sin. Self-righteousness Righteousness is when we who are sinful think that we're perfectly right and therefore are perfectly right and have the right to judge others. And yet, there's none of us that are righteous. There's not one of us that are righteous in our own right. We are all sinners. And we can only be made right with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Therefore, none of us, no one has the right to think of ourselves better than anyone else. And we certainly have no right to stand and to judge others. Jesus made that very clear when the woman was caught in adultery. And the self-righteous stood with the stones in their hands, ready to fire them at the lady. And Jesus quietly said, let those who have no sin throw the first stone. And they all, one by one, walked away. Even Paul, the great apostle, counted himself not as better than others, but he counted himself and uh, saw himself as, as the chiefest of sinners who was saved by grace alone through faith in Jesus Christ. We have been made right with God through faith and not our good works. We're to strive to be holy, for God is holy, but it doesn't make us uh, self-righteous. As children of God, we should live to honor God, seeking to do His will, seeking to live a life that turns from sin, putting, on, putting off our unrighteousness and putting on the righteousness of God. Romans 6 and 13 says, Don't let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourself completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. God is a righteous God. We are sinners deserving only the wrath of God. And yet in his righteousness, God chose to, to act in patience and grace and to reach out to mankind with an, an opportunity for salvation through his son, Jesus. And folks, whenever we come and put our faith and our trust in God, in a moment, in a moment we're made right. And that's why we can enter into the presence of God. In a moment, we are put on the perfect life of Christ. And we can come and stand before holy God and he looks upon us this morning and he sees the perfect life of his son. And his, his desire is that we would then seek to live to honor the rightness of God, 
to put off sin and, and choose to live a holy life. Not so that we can stand and say, oh, look at me, I'm holy and you're not. but because we want to be like him. And because he gave his life for us so that we could be made right with God. And as I said many times, our life here on earth, long or short, as Christians, it's a life of being changed and transformed day by day to become more and more like Christ. And then one day when we see him face to face, that work will be complete and we will be right. Our God is a holy God. He is perfect in righteousness. And today we can trust him because he's a holy God. And because God is right in everything he does. Whenever we ask God to come and to work in our lives, and, and, and maybe we're praying because we want a God to take us that way, but we end up having to go that way, we can be sure that that way was right and the other way was wrong. We can trust him because God is right in everything that he does, and everything that he says. And today, we are called to be like him. Living, to be ever being changed into the likeness of Jesus, God's holy son. What a wonderful God we serve. What a privilege it is to trust him. And we watched that wee video clip of the kids. I watched uh, two things. I watched how the guy celebrated whenever uh, uh, the blind man was able to see. And I thought, that's what we want a Sunday morning to be like. (laughs) You can look it up and watch it again. But... The other bit I was thinking of it was when Peter stepped out of the water. Uh, and you could see, as he looked down, the joy and the wonder that, that it worked. He's walking on the water. And folks, that's what it's like when we trust God. But we saw the other side that we all experience. I shared that last Sunday, that sometimes for no reason, it just comes up like a wave. And we find it hard to trust. And and you just saw his face change as he began to sink. God wants us to live lives of trusting in him. And the wonderful thing is that God is so amazing that even when we're struggling and we're struggling to trust him, we're sinking, he's still holding us by that. <laughs> you know, he's still lifting Peter up. And he never let him sink. And we can trust God, he'll never let us sink. And God has a plan for our lives and it's right because he is right in everything he does. And it's the right and the best uh, plan for you and for me, for our lives and for all of eternity. And we can trust him. And folks, when we trust him, like Peter, and this life, with all the storms, all the waves, with all the turmoil that we seem to face in life day by day, we can know a peace because we can trust God that he will work it all out for our good as we saw last Sunday, but work it out for rightness and for goodness. And for truth, and, and, and we, I don't know about you, but you know, we, live in, we live in this world and, and you watch the news and you watch programs that are on TV and, and you watch how people treat each other and, and, and you just feel sick. And there's a, you're, you're longing 
It's somewhere in your soul that longs for rightness, for, for holiness, for, for, for justice, for... One day, one day it will come. One day it will come. And one day, we will all stand before God. And justice will come. And everything, everything will be made right. Everything will be made right. What a wonderful God we serve. We're going to come and meet around this, the table and remember him. And this table reminds us of the cost that there was for God to show us mercy and patience. The cost that there was for God, God's rightness and righteousness to be uh, lifted from us that we could stand before him. And it meant that Jesus, the beautiful, holy son of God, who was perfectly right and everything he ever did, on that cross, he took all your guilt, all my guilt, all your shame, and all my shame, and all the filth of the sin of this world, and he took it upon himself. He became sin for us, and the whole of God's righteousness and the wrath of God was poured out upon him. So that on that day, God can look at the whole world and say, everything was made right. Everyone you hurt, Jesus was paid for. Everyone I hurt, Jesus was paid for. It was made right. What a privilege we have to come and to remember that amazing sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. The worship team are going to lead us in our worship and then we're going to partake of the elements. <laughs>